Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher. On February 12th of 2013, the council made some changes in the ordinance that impacted uh, real estate tax relief. And uh, the, 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 it was done with uh, some angst, but it was done knowing that it was going to be in the hands of a great organization called Human Services. And so I remember that night, the council kind of looked over to Steve Hawks, the director, and said, it's yours. And yes. so Valerie Hurt, program supervisor, and Romina Knight, uh, eligibility supervisor. How are you doing? Good, doing great. Why did they say it's yours with a smile, do you think? What's Human Services all about? Oh, they said it with a smile because they yeah. know that we are accustomed to handling uh, different programs, and um, we provide great customer service. So we, we are ready uh, to take on this task. Okay, to kind of set up what the, uh, the, the relief is about, these, this was a real estate relief for people who were uh, of, of senior age. Yes. And who were unable to possibly, or would be in, in uh, problems, dilemma? Sure. Yes, yes. And those things <clears throat> have not changed. The qualifications are still the same, uh, 65 or older, or uh, totally disabled. Uh, the income limit has remained the same. The household has a combined income of 67000 That's still the same. The um, resource limit they can have up to 350000 excluding the value of the home. And another qualification that remains the same is they have to live in the home to be qualified. Vara, you were able to do that with no notes. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can you keep track of that kind of stuff? Well, we, we've been actively engaged in uh, this for a few months. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but that's, I mean, but the environment in human services is to really take people who are confused, who are concerned, yes. mm -hmm. and really provide the facts. So you kind of yes. program yes. that way, yes. right? Yes. Yes, we are. We, you know, we, tax relief, we're just beginning to do that. But we are accustomed to serving the customers and even the uh, population of the 65 and older. So okay. yes. We, I was there that night when council talked about this, and it's really a, it's a difficult time because I think uh, we're all watching the news mm -hmm. um, and recognize that things have changed. And mm -hmm. I think our <coughs> residents have told us they understand things have changed yes. and they expect to kind of be here. But, but that one applies to me, right? Is that what you hear, Romina? Um, yes, it is. I mean, most people are just confused about the changes. They're not sure why the changes were made. Um, they're concerned with how the changes are going to um, impact their livelihoods. So the, those are the type of questions that we're receiving. You know, what am I supposed to do now if I don't qualify for tax relief? So basically, um, you know, we're just we're listening to their concerns. We're directing them to other resources if other resources are available, and just letting them know that we are here to do whatever it is we can to um, to kind of ease the pain a little bit. You know, I quite often, and my my stepmother lives in Virginia Beach, so she doesn't catch the show. That's why I can talk about it. But it, but you know, she's in the age range, and um, it's not just real estate taxes she's concerned about now. Her electric bill is going up, her gas bill is going up, her food bill is going up, uh -huh. her prescription bill. You know, it's on and on. Right. Is this the kind of thing that you're hearing? Mm -hmm. All the time. Services? Um, I also supervise the um, energy assistance program, so I deal with, with those customers who are having trouble paying their um, electric bills and, and keeping warm and, and those things. So, yeah, at Human Services, those are the types of um, problems that we hear on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So rather than just dealing with this in isolation as a real estate issue or a right. tax issue, mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to kind of really check it out? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. in the past, it worked just the form was in the mail, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how it worked in the past? Um, with, you're talking with the, the way the program was? Yeah, the program in the well, past. Customers could go into, I believe, the Commissioner of Revenue's office and have someone to actually sit there and help them out. Um, and we will be doing the same. We will be having um, information sessions mm -hmm. where customers can come out and have someone assist them with filling out the forms to answer questions that they have about the way the new process is, is going um, to be handled um, and just to, to answer any questions that they have. So we will be doing those community sessions. Okay, I'm going to get myself up here because all my stuff is handled through my escrow account and my mortgage and all that kind of thing. And I don't really pay attention to stuff like mm -hmm. that. What do you say to the person like me who is clueless? <laughs> so what are the time deadlines and timelines? Are we, in, are we kind of in the middle of all that too? Starts March 1st. The applications uh, to the customers that received it last year have already gone out 
and so it's from March 1st through June 1st. Okay, so if somebody gets an envelope from whom? Human Services now? Yes. Okay, North so North if you get this envelope from Human Services, pay attention to it. Exactly. Because that yes. means you've participated in the program before. Yes, that's right. And things have changed. Change, yes. yes, and we did include the changes in the letters that went out. Okay, so once they've opened the envelope and they read it, then what? Then they can give us a call okay. uh, if they have questions. Uh, and that number is 823-1130. Dad, come on, you got that one right too with no <laughs> notes, okay? Um, and so they can call and we have staff on hand to answer their questions. And as Romina mentioned, uh, the information sessions is going to be very important. The first one is going to be held on March 14th at the Norfolk Grove Course Development Center, 201, 201 East Little Creek Road. Dexter and, Kroger. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And they can come in at that time with their questions. We have staff on hand that can answer questions. We are going to accept their applications and just to assist them along the way. Okay. Now, the final day to do anything is when? June 1st. So come June 1st, if you haven't had some kind of interaction and you haven't opened that envelope, what happens? So this is a personal question, because that's what's <laughs> going to happen. Come around, oh, I don't know, May 30th, my wife's going to say, hey, what's this envelope? Mm -hmm. Well, I think at that point, then, depending on what the circumstances were, um, as to why you didn't get your application in on time, um, we will take into consideration some hardship issues, um, but that's just on a case-by-case -case basis, and that's after the deadline. So my recommendation, if you're over the age of 65, which by the way I'm not, and, um, you've, got, and you've gotten it, this envelope but you don't know it, after watching the show, go look for the envelope. Exactly. Yes. And if you're over the age of 65 and you don't know what we're talking about, call. 823-1130. Right, and get plugged in. Yes. yes. That's what it's, is yes. that how simple it is? That's how simple it is. <laughs> okay, let's take a couple of minutes and talk about the environment that we're in, though, because you talked about uh, energy assistance mm -hmm. and that. Are you seeing your phone calls increasing? Um, we have. Um, right now with, with energy assistance, our uh, programs are seasonal. So right now the program that we're in is our crisis assistance program who will assist customers who have disconnect notices on their heating bills. So, um, you know, we are taking quite a few calls and trying to help quite a few people who are in a disconnected status or whose power has already been disconnected. Um, so yeah, we have seen an increase in those calls. One of the things we hear quite a bit too is that people who are in need don't know where to go. Yeah. Do you find that to be true? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so where do they go? Well, most, most people know that they can come to us first mm -hmm. and they will come to us and if it's something that we don't handle, then we have excellent resources and we can get them to whomever it is that they need to get to in order to get the help that they're seeking. Whether it's help with, um, you know, finding a place to stay or, or um, you know, needing um, heating assistance mm -hmm. or shelter or whatever it is, we can, you know, direct them to where they need to be. So what I just heard from you is when <clears throat> Alice comes in to see you, you don't just answer her question, you're really paying attention to Alice. Right. And that's what yes. human services is really yes. all about. Yes, it's it working is. Working out for the whole person. That's the yes. whole person, exactly. So, okay, I'm going to ask you a question that we, you know, you've been doing this a long time. 25 years. You started as a little kid? <laughs> as a little kid, yes. <laughs> what kinds of things have you seen change? Uh, well, since the economy has mm -hmm. changed, we see more people coming in that have a need for the services. Um, you know, people that have never been on any type of assistance before. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we have to kind of change the way we do business in that, uh, you know, we take the time to explain, answer all the questions, um, and just to see, you know, exactly what it is, the need they have, and what can we do to provide. Yeah. You know, when I was asking the questions about the process, I was saying when I got the, I didn't get, the, and I'm not going to get the number one because I don't, I don't, part, I don't really them. get engaged, mm -hmm. but my next door neighbor does. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm thinking is one of the roles I can play, or the viewer that's watching that's in the same boat, is this might be the time to go knock on the door mm -hmm. of that next yes. door neighbor. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So cool. I yes. want to thank you guys for everything that you do, not just in, in helping to make the transition in this, in this whole new approach to an established program, but help people's needs. Mm -hmm. 
we've got to recognize the current environment that uh, the resources aren't there that used to be there, but right. and, but to make sure that we plug into the people that really need it. Right. Yes. And it's reassuring <laughs> to know that there are professionals who can quote this stuff right <laughs> off the top of their head, <laughs> who can give good direction and guidance. And I want to say right. thank you for not just you guys, but that staff that you're yes. going back to. Yes. That work diligently day in and day out, right? Yes. 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 See, we know you're there. Yes. Yes. We really <laughs> do. We now, we want you to be there. Give us a call, holler at 823-113 if you have no idea what this was all about, because we want to make sure that you can help carry the message that, yeah, today might be tougher than it was yesterday, but as a community in working with good direction, good information, we can get through it. Thanks for joining us.